Welcome back to Finnegan's Farm, welcome back to the YouTube channel and welcome back to Workshop Wednesday. My name is Paul and this is our team. Hello, I'm Mick and I'm the mechanic. Hello, I'm Caelan Russell and I'm the mechanic. Hello, I'm Sean, I'm the patent mechanic. Hello, my name is Marco, I love to go. This is Bruce, this is Blake, them two best students. Don't forget to like, subscribe to the videos and comment if you want and we will get back to you. So in for repair today we have the John Deere 7710, we have the Dale Kale uh, Bowser, diesel Bowser, we also have our work trailer in, we have a flat trailer in as well and we have an update on the grubber. Just before we get started there, a big shout out to the guys in Midlow Garages who brought us over last week to Carmick, to, uh, to Robert and to Kevin there. We went on a trip last week over to Austria to see the case and Steyr and some of the bigger new Hollands they have been built. A great insight to get it inside the factory to see how, it, how everything worked and how very efficient that the guys were over there in the factory. And then also we got to test drive some of the machines as well. We got into the new 260s and it was, uh, yeah, it was a great, great treat there just to get over, get it spinning all the new tractors that's coming through and just to see how they operated. And uh, yeah, look, just a big shout out to everyone. And also we had a bit of crack and it was great to talk to other guys there as well who have who've tractors, who've case tractors. So a really well worked trip and thanks very much lads. First of all, we're going to head over to Mick there with the 7710. So we brought the 7710 in just to check out the lift arms on it here because they're working them down. Now the first thing we said we do was to take off the, the hitch rods there because they can be, sometimes get a little bit sticky. So just going to drop down the hitch on the jack here. If the arms will go down, which they won't. So there we go. Well, first of all, let's drop them down out of the way. Now, it will go up, as you can see here. But it won't come down, unless you put a bit of weight in it. So what we've done here, Mick, we have greased these two bottom ones. These are taking grease. Yeah, the bottom ones are taking grease. So the bottom pivots are taking grease because we've seen that before when they get seized, yep. um, it won't let the ram move forward. Now, <coughs> looking at that there, it won't take grease. This one won't take grease, and this one definitely won't because there's, no there's, there's no grease. Because there's no grease on it. <laughs> um, so that's obviously an issue as well. But we think the problem might be on this ram here. Now we also have seen where these seals go. I think we done it on the 6910. Yeah. Uh, it was the same problem. And the A430. Yeah, and we put new seals in it. But we think actually that this pin might be pivoting yeah. there. It's not pivoting on that pin. Because when you push down that there, just push down that side, Mike. I'm not heavy enough. I think it's not heavy enough here anyway. Right and, here. and the fact that there's a single acting ram doesn't help. You've only power up, no power down. Yeah, and the arrow displacement ram as well. So Yeah, you've no. Um, Cap inside, cap inside the it, so they're just basically floating in, 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 the, in the cylinder yep. there. So, look, at, we're going to have to probably free this pin up here for a start. Well, try and get it out for starters. Not simple, especially with the wheel here the way they are. We've often seen it out. We used to have to take off the wheel to get at them, but look, at, we'll, uh, we might have to try a little bit of magic first. Hold well on, Paul, bring it up a little bit. What's the problem? Ooh. Not quite sure. I was convinced after getting the pins out that it was the rams. But the so, moment we take them out... Here's this pin that's coming <coughs> out. Um, yeah. Didn't see a lot of grease, so it didn't. No. And the other one, the grease that was sheared off, this one here, from this side, and it's not bad. Yeah. It's not that bad. one had a greaser in through there. <coughs> it was on the inside. But I think at this stage we probably would have set seals in there anyway. Oh, we're going this far? Yeah, we would have set <laughs> seals in here not, and free out the pins. It's not, remember the problem we had before with the 8430? Or the 6, 9, 10. Yeah. Where, um... Sean, yeah. when you get um, oil dry there and fucking... Uh, Sorry, I can handle that. So that's going down freely. Yeah, but uh, I'm just being handy here because I'm flooding oil all over the place. But that, that is not seized. No. I think it's all back together. Oh, the that one was weepy. Yeah, I think we'll, we'll both say see, isn't it? Let's see what uh, we're like here, boys. Free out the pins. Grab that. <coughs> I want to see if there's lock and clips. <coughs> Jesus, shut up. Here, Paul. <coughs> don't lift over all together. If it'll come, I see, I don't know if they're lock and ring. There we go. That makes life easy. So, that's the I might as well throw piston them in. out. And that one was wet, Paul. Set of seals in there. Just Don't it that it was a bit damp around it before we started. This one was fairly dry. But we're gone this far, we might as well. 
we, um, so it's, it's all, yeah, but we'll pull, do this one first. Right, okay, that's, that's what we do. So we've got a handbrake back working on the Ivor Williams trailer. This is the work trailer and the handbrake was not working. But then we had a set of worn. The, the lot were worn. But yeah. it does savage mild. Yeah. So this is ours. weight. It's ours in the road. And it has a bit of weight. Now we got the drums re-skimmed as well. Yep. And putting a new set of shoes in it there. So it's completely revamped. Revamped there now because very important there, especially when you have a little bit of weight that like your brakes are yeah. working and like yeah. you have a handbrake because sometimes we take this off, it could roll and roll in the we, back of the we, Jeep. We pulled the handbrake up when we brought it in, you could still spin all the wheels. Yeah, so that's really what, what brought us to his mm -hmm. attention anyway. Still no harm to have a look at them. Should really be looked at once a year anyway at least. Well, if your handbrake was an indication, yeah. if it's going up very far, you have a problem. Yeah, it can be sometimes overlooked. They're on the road and people forget about them, but it's just, just very important, especially when you have the weight and you have a Jeep in front of it as well, when you want to stop, you need to stop. Sure, leaves are required to have a problem. Through too, Mick, through too. Yeah. So we're just going to head into Sean. He's busy painting up the Kinskilda Harrow there that we kind of refurbished. I see he's all the tines and that. We took all them off and just sprayed because it's easier to spray the, fa the frame and then we would bolt these back on. Again, they're good and black and they won't look out of place anyway. So we'll just see how he's getting on. Much prep on this or what was the... Well, take off the rams, take all, well, all of Marco's genius ideas off. Yeah, <laughs> so we've, we've rams off, pipes off, anything there that we can just bolt on yeah, there or put pins in there. And yeah. you have gone uh, ahead and primed it up there. Yeah, sanded it down first with the machine and yeah. I didn't really take that long now. Just take the rough off, the rough edges off. And yeah, there's not a lot of flat surfaces on it anyway. It's not yeah, that we can, yeah. you know, look at it. We weren't going to spend, we said we spend time, but we weren't yeah. going to spend too much time on it because, again, it's only an operating reform, it mightn't be used that much. No. And I see you've gone with the different colour here. What's going on That's here? That's the best colour, Paul. Just wouldn't go right again. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, yeah, we're going to convert it there from a Kinskilde green colour just with the John Deere paint, probably will, you know, behind the John Deere yeah. tractor, it looks a bit, yeah. looks a bit hard, won't it? Oh, well, Jesus. And actually, the John Deere paint is great, and it was good body in it there great, as well yeah. for for, uh, for spraying the grass. So, yeah, look, it's coming coming to, to be a shape there now, and we have just have the tines of back on it. Yeah, put all back on. Probably again, that won't take too long, then. and she's ready for the road. That's it. So we've primer, and the first coat of green is just going on. Sean is after applying it there now, and it'll probably do another coat, but. In fairness, it doesn't look too bad. It will look an awful lot better when we put the legs on it as well, because they are black in colour. And uh, put the rams on it then, so it is taking shape there, and it looks looks more like a John Deere grubber now than a Conskilde, but anyway. still we get a Conskilde badge for a foot on it, just to keep it, keep it original. So we have our Jimmy back in again. Now we have these tyres on it, and these are for the field. Probably haven't that much field work to do with it there, so we decided we're going to go back onto the road tyres, which is the original tyres that came with it. The only thing that the original tyres, they were completely black and they looked very plain looking, and Cahill being Cahill decided, you know, we need to jizz it up over here. So actually it was Eamon decided he'd get the white marker and paint all these in. Now, it takes a bit of doing because it's a, it's a fairly monotonous job, but we Googled it there, YouTubed it, and the handiest way to do it is with permanent marker it's the paint uh, right hand marker now you can work with that way but it's very slow and coming out and can be a little bit runny the handiest thing we've done is we actually cut the top off it we spilt out the contents and we worked it with the marker in around all the letters and as you can see it does look the job but it does take a little bit of time but he's all four wheels done here now and we're just going to get pop these wheels back on and I think she looked the best. And this is also useful there if you're doing any of your shadow boards inside because we had a few inquiries there on what we use and that's the make of it there. Just get them, give them a good shake and uh, you can write around. They're perfect for that job but for this job you need to give that a good clean there. We had to get a good, because uh, um, with the rubber on it there there's a lot of, you know, a lot of grease and a lot of additives on it there that you need to take off first to make sure it's very very clean and then you can start painting in around you might have to give it two or three goes just to get it right but when it when you do get it right it does look the job there so now we got the new wheels on the bus is ready to go thanks to Eamon and Sean for putting them on <laughs> oh that's the job flashlights flashlights <laughs> So we've marker walking away here on the bale fork. It's in a bit of disrepair, as we just say. There is uh, this one is completely gone here. See the bushing on that? It's oval, yeah. isn't it? 
cracked. It's cracked around there. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that one out. This one here actually doesn't look too bad, and we probably mightn't have to replace that one. We get no, away with that one no. because yeah. the fire comes on the far side. Now we are going to put a bit of a 10 mil washer in at the back, but it'll also help to support it as well. Yeah. There's no harm to have them in here. And uh, yeah, we've that, we've that um, ordered up, so we're going to put the 10 mil washer on it, put a new bush into it, and then yeah. the fork should be ready to go. So, a little bit of work to do on it there. Just It's a little bit awkward cutting it, isn't it? Just a, yeah, it's not easy. Yeah. No. We, we're the right man on the job, and yeah, that's the main thing. So, uh, we let him have that. So a few modifications to our Dale Kale diesel tank. Now I have to say we put this solar panel on it last year and we weren't overly expecting it to, for it to run the machine, but in fairness, it was a great job, wasn't oh, yeah. it, Marco? Oh yeah. Yeah, Better. because before that you'd be changing batteries and all the time you'd have battery be dead and you'd be plugging it in with the Jeep. So we put the solar panel on and we connected to here. Now we had a leisure battery in it, and this is the battery that ran it last year. Um, it was a 70 amp battery. It was a little bit small in size and it did fit in here, but what we done is we actually moved the bracket here and we put in a bigger one because we reckoned this is 115 amp. These leisure batteries are a great job and mm. that should keep it going. There was only the very odd time maybe when we'd be filling combines and that and it was constantly on the go that the battery would run out and hopefully this should should improve it as well. We also we had to change this unit here and bring it over to the next hole. Um, one of this, this was loose here too, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. And you tighten that up, uh, put tape on there, tighten it up, move the bracket across because it's it's a little bit, it got a little bit loose on the bolts there and all of a sudden then it was spinning around the place. So that should really tie it up. Now we have some bits to do on the, the wire here. We'll probably get Mick to look at that. Maybe put in a heavier duty wire on it. Yeah, I think, yeah. Yeah, because it's very, if that gets diesel on it at all, it's always inclined mm. to break and crack on that. So, yeah, look at it, it'll be, it has a great diesel bowser in fairness to it, and um, we never had any bothers with it, and this definitely is the way to go, because you're not rooting with batteries around like that. And it runs the Ad Blue tank on the front as well, so we have diesel and Ad Blue with it. So no matter where we go, we have everything at our, at our disposal. We're not looking for Ad Blue cans, and, rooting around because <laughs> you just don't want to go there, especially with AdBlue. So that's really all the mods we've done on it. Um, yeah, it's just a matter of tightening up the wires then and she's ready for road. So now it's time for... Tips and tricks, tips and tricks. So this week's tips and tricks, um, we're joined by Mick here who has a few little toothpicks here, Mick, is it? Yeah, you could do if you were stuck. If you're stuck, yeah, but uh, the application here is to try to get the seal out of, yeah. out of this John Deere here, which yeah, we're not working on. Wrecking cylinder and all that. The, that particular one just works a treat on this job. I can hook in there into the seal. Now, to be fair, unusually this seal is soft. Oh, yeah. They can be dog hard. So you can get right underneath that. Yeah, I'm in, I'm in under the lip on the seal, and of course it won't come for me. One more go. <laughs> I'm blocking you. No, Colin, there we go. Just as simple as that. So you yeah. need that, the like of that one was able to it just suits that job. get right underneath. That, that one's not very long, but yeah, you, you have you have bigger ones there. You, you have got bigger ones there as well. The likes of these, but it's a bit bold, but they are good in particular jobs. Yeah, you're too not to tip off that already, especially when you're taking out seals anyway. Oh yeah, because normally they're rigid as could be. Yeah, but it ain't. There you go. We're just going to do a quick little review here on the toolbox that we've got in. Now, it's not for this workshop here, but it's for another application. Again, it's a cheap and cheerful one. Uh, you don't have to have all the snap-on bits and the whole lot. Uh, we got it there from All Tools Direct. 129 euro. And let's take it out there and we can see what's in it here for the it's crack. It's heavy. Huh? It's 13 kilos. It just doesn't want to come out, does it? The plastic is sticking it. So it's actually like a carry case. You hit it off in your hollows, Mick. Wouldn't you? Yeah. No wheels. <laughs> has a little handle. And it actually has a set of wheels. <laughs> so, drop it down. We can actually throw it up on the bench here now. We might get a better look into it, see what's in it. Might be a bit, little bit light here 
on the hinges here maybe, but anyway, what do you expect for that? So, what's in it? That clips in like that, yeah. Yeah, one set, and oh, we got this another set. Hold on. And the hammer. And the hammer, yeah. <laughs> You may hit the nail with that, Mick, will you? Yeah. Nah. I did. Ev eventually. I did. Ah, come on. How many takes did we take for that? It's five goals. Not as many as yours. It'd be five goals before <laughs> you got it. Look, and there's all the little little junior hacks on, and that's how we want. We just want it for something very simple. Um, set of screwdrivers. Yeah. Great set of sockets. Wouldn't well, be fantastic quality by no means, but I'd say they'd probably lose them quicker than break them anyway, won't they? This one here, that's it, what's coming out? That's it, look like that. There's even a few ratchet spanners right now. Yeah, huh? Don't know what they'd be like now. What is this? Oh, no, nice. Not too bad? Not bad. <laughs> yeah, not bad actually. Well, Nice shiny one. So with this week's Mixed Mystery Tool, actually no one guessed the correct answer, but we had a few answers kind of similar, Mick, wasn't there? It was not, it's not related to the job they were saying, they were saying for pushing back brake pistons. It's not. It's not. Are you going to give a bit of a tip? Are we going to let, yeah. we're going to let it run for another week anyway, and you might get a clear we'll off. give a hint. He's a um, little, it's little bit hesitant it's, here. It's, it's engine related. So it, your work is it's part of uh, when you're doing a job in an engine. Yes, and it saves you a lot of time. Okay. A lot, of, a lot of time, and especially in a big engine. Yeah, well, look, we'll let it run for another week. There, we'll see how how the engine experts make it on <laughs> way ahead, and they might get the And it will still be current use on push out engines. That's a hint, actually. Oh, Mick, you're giving giving it all away here. Mm -hmm. It's not like you. No. Anyway, best luck, lads. Three correct answers. We'll be on the board next week. <laughs> Good luck. So that's it for this week's Workshop Wednesday. Don't forget to like, subscribe to the videos there and comment to what you want. And uh, yeah, so from everyone here at Finnegan's Farm, we'll talk to you all next Wednesday. <laughs>